Khan Academy is most known for its, its collection of videos, so before I go any farther, uh, let, let me show you a little bit of a, a montage. So the hypotenuse is now going to be five. This animal's fossils are only found in this area of South America, a nice clean band here, and this part of Africa. We could integrate over the surface, and the notation usually is a capital sigma. National Assembly, they create the Committee of Public Safety, which sounds like a very nice committee. Notice. This is an aldehyde, and it's an alcohol. Start differentiating into effector and memory cells. A galaxy. Hey, there's another galaxy. Oh, look, there's another galaxy. And for dollars, is there 30 million plus the 20 million dollars from the American manufacturer? If this does not blow your mind, then you have no emotion. <laughs> we now have. On the order of, of, of 2,200 videos covering everything from basic arithmetic all the way to, to, to vector calculus and some of the stuff that, that you saw up there. Uh, we have a, a million students a month using the site, watching on the order of 100 to 200,000 videos a, a day. Uh, but, but what we're going to talk about in this is, is how we're going uh, to the next level. Uh, but before I, I do that, I, I want to talk a little bit about really just how I got started. And, uh, some of y'all might know, about five years ago, I was an analyst at a hedge fund. And I was in Boston, and I was tutoring my cousins in New Orleans remotely. And I started putting the first YouTube videos up, really just as kind of a nice to have, just kind of a supplement for my cousins, something that might you know, give, give them a refresher or something. And as soon as I put those first YouTube videos up, something interesting happened. Actually, a bunch of interesting things happened. The first was the feedback from my cousins. They told me, that they preferred me on YouTube than in person. <laughs> and and, and once, once you get over the backhanded nature of that, I, there was actually something very profound there. They were saying that they preferred the automated version of their cousin to their cousin. At first, it's very unintuitive, but when you actually think about it from their point of view, it makes a ton of sense. You have this situation where now they can pause and repeat their cousin. Now they can, uh, without feeling like they're wasting my time, they could, if they have to uh, review something that they should have learned a couple of weeks ago or maybe a couple of years ago, uh, they, they don't have to be embarrassed and, and ask their cousin. They can just watch those videos. If they're bored, they can go ahead. They can watch it at their own time, at their own pace. And probably the, the, the least appreciated, uh, I guess, aspect of, of this is the notion that the very first time, the very first time that you're trying to get your brain around a new concept, the very last thing you need is another human being saying, do you understand this? And that's what was happening with the, the interaction with my cousins uh, before. And now they could just do it kind of in, 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 kind of a, in the intimacy of their, of their, of their own room. Uh, the other thing that happened is, you know, I put them on YouTube just, just you know, for, for the, you know, I, I, I saw no reason to make it private, so I, I let other people watch it. And, and then people started stumbling on it. And, and I started getting some comments and some letters and, and all sorts of kind of feedback from, from random people around the world. And you know, these are just a few. This is actually from one of the original calculus videos. And someone wrote just on YouTube. It was a YouTube comment. First time I smiled doing a derivative. <laughs> and let's, let's, let's pause here. This person did a derivative, and then they smiled. <laughs> and then in response to that same comment, this is on the thread. You could go on YouTube and, and look at these comments. Someone else wrote, same thing here. I actually got a natural high and a good mood for the entire day. Since I remember seeing all of this matrix text in class, and here I'm all like, I know Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> And we got a lot of feedback along those lines. You know, it's clearly it was helping people. But then as, as the viewership kept growing and kept growing, I, I started getting letters from, from people. And it was, it was trying to become clear that it was actually more than just a nice to have. Uh, th this is just a, an excerpt from one of, one of those letters. Uh, my 12-year-old son has autism and has had a terrible time with math. We have tried everything, viewed everything, bought everything. We stumbled on your video de on decimals, and it got through. 
Then we went on to the dreaded fractions. Again, he got it. We could not believe it. He is so excited. And so you can imagine, you know, here I was, a, 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 an analyst at a hedge fund. Uh, I, it, it was very strange for me to do something of social value. <laughs> so, I, I, I was, I was, uh, it was But uh, I, I was excited, so I kept going. And then a few things, other things started to dawn on me. That not only would it help my cousins right now, or, or these people who were sending letters, but it could maybe that this content will never go old, that it could help their kids or their grandkids. If Isaac Newton had done YouTube videos on calculus, I wouldn't have to. <laughs> uh, assu assu assuming he was good, oh, we don't know. I mean, the, uh, uh, the other thing that happened, and, you know, even at this point, you know, I said, okay, maybe it's a good supplement, it's good for motivated students, it's good for maybe homeschoolers, but I didn't think it would be something that would somehow penetrate the classroom. But then I started getting letters from teachers, and the teachers would write saying, we've used your videos to flip the classroom. You've given the lectures. So now what we do, and this could actually happen in every classroom in America tomorrow, what I do is I assign the lectures for homework, and what used to be homework I now have the students doing in the classroom. And I want to I want to pause here for I, I, I want to pause here for a second because there's a couple of interesting things. One, when those when those teachers are doing that, th there's there's the obvious benefit. There's the uh, the benefit that now their their students can enjoy the videos in the way that my cousins did. They can pause, repeat at their own pace uh, at their own time. But the more interesting thing, and this is the unintuitive thing when you talk about technology in the classroom, by removing the one-size-fits-all lecture from the classroom and letting, and letting students have a self-paced lecture at home, and then when you go to the classroom, letting them do work, having the, stu the teacher walk around, having the peers actually be able to interact with each other, these teachers have used technology to humanize the classroom. They took a fundamentally dehumanizing experience, a bunch of th 30 kids with their fingers on their lips, not allowed to interact with each other. A teacher, no matter how good, has to give this kind of one-size-fits-all lecture to 30 students, you know, blank faces, slightly antagonistic, and now it's a human experience. Now they're actually interacting with each other. So once the Khan Academy kind of, you know, I, I quit my job and, and, and we turned into a real organization, we're a not-for-profit, um, the question is, how do we take this to uh, the next level. How do we take what those teachers were doing to their natural conclusion? And so what I'm showing over here, these are actual uh, exercises that I started writing for my cousins. Uh, the ones I started were much more primitive. This is a, a, a kind of a, a more competent version of it. But the paradigm here is we'll, we'll, we'll generate as many questions as you need until you get that concept, until you get 10 in a row. And the, the, the Khan Academy videos are there. You get hints, the actual steps for that problem if you don't know how to do it. But the paradigm here, it seems like a very simple thing, 10 in a row, you move on, but it's fundamentally different than what's happening in classrooms right, right now. In a, in a traditional classroom, you have a couple of uh, uh, homework, homework lecture, homework lecture, and then you have a snapshot exam. And that exam, whether you get a, a 70%, an 80%, a 90%, or a 95%, the class moves on to the next topic. And even that 95% that, that student, what was the 5% they didn't know? Maybe they didn't know what, what happens when you raise something to the, to the zeroth power. And then you go build on that in the next concept. That's analogous to, uh, imagine learning to ride a bicycle. And I give you a bicycle, maybe I give you a lecture ahead of time, and, and I give you that, that bicycle for two weeks, and then I come back after two weeks, and I say, well, let's see, you're having trouble taking left turns, you can't quite stop, you're, you're an 80% bicyclist. So I put a big C stamp on your forehead, and then I say, here's a unicycle. But as ridiculous as that sounds, that's exactly what's happening in our, in our, in our classrooms right now. And, and, and the idea is, you know, you, you fast forward and students start, good students start failing algebra all of a sudden and start failing uh, calculus all of a sudden, despite it being smart, despite having good teachers, and it's usually because they had these Swiss cheese gaps that kept building throughout their foundation. So our, our model is learn math the way you would learn anything, like the way you would learn a bicycle. Stay on that bicycle. Fall off that bicycle. Do it as long as necessary until you have mastery. The traditional model, it penalizes you for experimentation and failure, but it does not expect mastery. We encourage you to experiment. We ex encourage you to failure, but we do expect mastery. This is just another one of the modules. This is trigonometry. This is shifting and reflecting functions. 
And, and they all fit together. We have, we have about 90 of these right now. And, and, and you can go to the site right now. It's all free, not, not trying to sell anything. Uh, but the general idea is that they all fit into this knowledge map. That top node right there, that's literally single-digit addition. It's like one.